Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Dr. Nitin Lamshetpar from uh, CSI Nidhi Nagpur, and uh, I'll explain about the automobile air pollution emission control options and its implementation. As we all understand that uh, automobile or transportation rather, it's a significant contributor to particulate matter emission. Therefore, it is uh, quite important to deal with this topic. Uh, well, I would say that many of you are already familiar with this and a uh, few of you may also be more knowledgeable as you're working in the field. So please uh, ignore some of my slides which are intended to explain you the uh, subject, okay, the background. So please don't feel offended. So these are the things which we will deal uh, today. Uh, I know that we are focusing on the PM uh, reduction strategies and its implementation, but at the same time, it is extremely important to understand uh, about the automobile emissions, uh, the factors responsible for that, and then we will move on about the different options, especially the technological options, okay, and what is the need to contain the particulate matter uh, emissions from as far as uh, automobiles are concerned. So uh, I'm sure you must have been already uh, taught about uh, urban air quality management. And as I already mentioned that many of you are having a good expertise about this. I'm going to skip it. This is the overall management wherein we uh, start with the air quality monitoring, which tells us how the air quality is. And then there are ways to uh, do the emission inventory, okay, to find out what are the causes of this. And finally, they do a lot of modeling to identify are the different sources and once we have the details about what are the different factors which are contributing to the air quality and deterioration then accordingly we prepare the control strategy now since we are uh, today focusing on uh, automobile emissions so we need to also understand the relationship between automobile and the environment and sometimes it is also considered of course as a energy issues so what you, we talk uh, and we have been talking since many decades is an air pollution problem from automobile. And these are the typical pollutants like NOx, hydrocarbons, particulate matter and carbon monoxide. In the recent past, global warming has become a big issue. And now we probably talk uh, more about the global warming in addition to the conventional air pollutants. When we have too much of uh, automobile, okay, so the waste generated is also important and as you can uh, see that India has recently announced its uh, scrapping policy, vehicle scrapping pol uh, policy. So waste disposal is another issue which is also contributing to the environmental aspects. And if you talk about any individual then he will talk probably more on the traffic accident and the safety because that is also taking the lives. Okay. So carbon uh, and environmental footprint, overall carbon and environmental footprint is the new, new, new things which uh, everybody wants to talk about as far as transportation is concerned. Second thing probably you are not able to see this is a life cycle assessment or life cycle analysis. So for anything and everything, if you can possibly do the life cycle analysis, which gives you fairly good idea about the life cycle footprint. So today we'll be focusing on the PM emissions because uh, that is the agenda and that is very obvious because uh, particulate matter is a major, major concern as well as India is concerned, okay? Well, uh, I'm, I'm sorry for a small font, but all these things are very much available. I have taken it from the ARA India, okay, website. So these are the emission standards as far as uh, compression, aggression, and uh, uh, you know, like the petrol, uh, engines are which is a positive you know, sometimes called as a positive ignition so these are the emission standard for bs uh, stage 6 okay so the only thing i'll highlight that you need to understand from here that what are the important pollutants from a gasoline driven vehicle and a diesel driven vehicle okay for example it is written here carbon monoxide hydrocarbon nox non-methane hydrocarbon particulate matter operative emissions okay so these are the different emissions which are of major concern, okay? And these are the limits. So I'm sure you all understand how these are formed. So India has been, uh, I would say, doing great as far as um, emission standard implementation.
implementation are concerned and now we are into the regime of uh, so called bharat state 6 or sometimes it is also known as a euro 6 which are also sometimes called as a uh, you know like the world class emission standards so these are quite ambitious emission standards and we must complement the efforts on part of the uh, related agencies as well as the automobile uh, community automobile industry for successfully implementing these uh, emission standards in india so these are the limits and generally for gasoline driven vehicle the limits are expressed in terms of uh, particular emissions per kilometer say carbon monoxide these many grams of carbon monoxides are allowed per kilometer of vehicle travel okay because that is directly related to if your vehicle is running for 100 kilometers it should not emit say more than x amount of carbon monoxide or more than x amount of particulate matter so obviously these are going very stringent from the ages of uh, i would say bharat stage one to then two three four and there was a leapfrogging from four to six which was quite ambitious i would say but again compliments to all the involved agencies that uh, we could meet uh, those deadlines emission standards are in place so if you are more interested then you can refer to these websites of either cpcb or arai or siam and you will find all these standards for anything else you can get in touch with me now i am realizing that uh, of quite often when even sometimes i got an opportunity to present before the policy makers okay and when we show them that this is a particulate matter uh, emission inventory wherein okay we have to show different sources so as far as vehicular emissions, especially diesel vehicle is concerned, they are major contributor to the overall PM emissions. So based on the previous lectures, we can say with the reasonable confidence that uh, air quality is not at all as per the standards with respect to the particulate matter in specific. Studies infer that significant contribution of diesel vehicle. There are many studies, many reliable studies by the uh, reputed institutions. Okay. Usually PM emissions from various sources are expressed on mass basis. Okay, you all also know that. Contribution of diesel PM emission is more for lower particle fraction. What message I'm trying to convince here that when you explain to the policy makers that say 30% of the contribution is from the road dust and say 10% contribution is from the diesel vehicle, obviously there will be a question that probably road vehicle is more important, um, and road dust is more important then the pm from the diesel exhaust but can we compare one ton of road dust particle with one ton of diesel particulate matter okay no because for two reasons one is the number of the particles in one kg of uh, one ton of uh, particulate matter or the size of the particles and the second thing we should also start giving importance to the toxicity factor that whether the one ton of road dust will be equally harmful to that of one ton of diesel pm okay so it is important to understand that the chemical composition okay and the size of the particle is also very very important when it comes to the overall health and environmental impact so in that term the diesel emissions or for that matter any combustion emission are more important than many of the different emissions these are the health impacts of air pollution and for saving time uh, i would say again i'm not going to go into the details of this thing there's enough literature available very good studies available and now they are able to even quantify and monetize these emissions okay uh, these impacts so there are specific health impacts okay well documented by credible agencies there are environmental impacts and all put together uh, we can say that automobile or transportation are contributing very, very significant, uh, significantly to many emissions as well as the particulate matter emissions in particular. Well, uh, if you see the projections and uh, many of you are, most of you are aware that we are talking about the e-mobility, we are talking about the renewables, we are talking about the cleaner mobility or mass transportation. So the kind of efforts going on, sometimes it gives an impression, okay, that maybe after 20 years or 25 years or 30 years, it's all going to be green. But most of the projections show that it's not going to be green, okay? Why? 
For a country, developing country or fast growing country like India, the efforts are really very impressive to clean the mobility aspects. But at the same time, okay, the mobility requirement is also increasing. It is quite similar to the energy demand. So we are targeting, say, for example, 500 gigawatt of solar. So apparently it looks like that after one decade, it will be all solar. Very unfortunately, after one decade, your overall energy demand will go. So quite similarly, it will also happen to the automobile. So although we are talking about the cleaner vehicle, the e-mobility, the number of automobile required will be quite high. Now, coming to the contribution of automobiles to the PM 2.5 and other emissions. So this is uh, data from, uh, uh, I'm sure from ARI study. So you can see the Delhi, the PM 10 contribution is about 12.8 uh, kiloton per year, which is very high and more than more than almost everything then there is a 24 kiloton contribution from uh, road dust so if you put these two together okay so the transportation or mobility is contributing probably maximum as per as particulate matter are concerned and the next comes the construction activity if you add the toxicity factor to the pm10 <coughs> from transport sector obviously the overall you know, like the burden, particulate matter and health burden from the particulate matter emissions will be very significant for transportation. So we cannot ignore rather transportation should be one of the most important target to achieve the PM reduction strategies under the NCAP program. <coughs> Before we go into the technical aspects of automobile emission control, I would like to uh, sensitize you, okay, or I would like to remind you that uh, there, these are some of the, I would say, fundamentals I personally consider it. That as far as transport emission control is concerned, that any intervention should lead to, first of all, as a management strategy, reduce vehicle kilometers per passenger. What does it mean? Why do you need to travel? Can you minimize that requirement? Okay. And the answer is yes. If you have a proper town planning, if you go to certain cities, you will find the people moving from one direction in the morning, okay? And then other side of the people is going to the another direction and they just, you know, like they have a reverse, uh, reverse direction in the evening. What does it mean? A poor town planning. So we should try to reduce the mobility requirement or transportation requirement, okay? I'm not considering here for, uh, you know, like uh, pleasure trips or recreation, okay? That is fine. But for going to work or for going for daily needs, we should minimize. Then the second is reduce fuel per vehicle kilometer. What does it mean? Your vehicle should be fuel efficient. Fortunately, India is good at it because we use a lot of almost close to 70% two wheelers, which gives you very good fuel efficiency. But naturally, the high, uh, you know, like power vehicle, high end vehicles, they don't offer this. The third is reduced fuel per passenger kilometer. For example, you talk about the mass transportation. If you see the fuel requirement per passenger per kilometer, it's minimum for the bus, okay, or any other mass transportation. So we need to provide the mass transportation options. Then reduce pollution per unit of fuel per kilometer or per passenger. Means you can use a cleaner vehicle use after treatment technology like catalytic converter but at the same time this will be again minimum if you are using a mass transportation for example a bus then reduce cost of per unit emission control this is very important especially with respect to the less developed countries because anything you want to have it will have impact on the uh, you know like individuals financial capabilities so control of emission from new vehicle or tailpipe emission should not be the only target we have been very aggressive and very successful when it comes to the control of emissions that too only tailpipe emissions from the new vehicle we started from the euro zero and now we are at the bharat stage six which is very impressive so we need to also make efforts to reduce the health and environmental impact overall health and important impact okay and to the cleaner mobility so how to reduce pollution from automobile say ic engines one is the advanced engine so there have been a great development thanks to automobile industry and the innovations happened okay 
that's actually touching the limit you must have heard that uh, there are vehicles which can actually clean the ambient air so what they are doing basically they are controlling their exhaust emissions to the extent possible and obviously every vehicle requires the air so they suck air from the i mean the ambient air okay and after it is used in the engine it is being treated to the extent possible that the pm concentration in the exhaust is even less than the ambient air i mean that's the level of technologies today companies are talking about improved fuel quality that has been achieved we should probably say there are some issues but i don't consider them as a very important issue driving behavior improvement in the road conditions this has been a big challenge because that uh, hits your uh, fuel economy that hits your performance of auto exhaust treatment uh, devices that will increase the road dust emissions okay that will also increase your tire emissions and that will also impact your overall vehicle performance that improved tailpipe emission by implementing standards those are already in place okay using after exhaust treatment that has been achieved as i mentioned transportation and traffic management is being improved in the recent year i would say through highways through uh, i mean other means of uh, flyovers and all that reduced emission exposure something needs to be done for this inspection and maintenance of vehicle i have intentionally put it in red because this is a very very gray area and i'm going to emphasize more on this control of emissions from old and in use vehicle is a big task okay what so far india has done as well as clean passenger and uh, hd vehicles heavy duty vehicles decarbonizing fleet is going on okay reducing conventional emissions achieved to the extent possible fuel efficiency has also been achieved because there are norms for the fuel efficiency carbon footprint is being minimized there are different uh, policies as well as norms okay and so on and so forth now these are the different steps taken which i have been repeating okay promotion of uh, sorry implementation of bs6 norms puc which has never been successful uh, in my personal view okay thrust on cleaner transportation fuel like the cng has got with the partial success okay now what are the emission control technologies and how to get uh, maximum benefits out of it so we need to talk about the overall emission controls from automobile or from mobility requirement or from the transportation so let's talk about first engine design technologies which is uh, not like uh, uh, much to our uh, sort of required uh, syllabi under this program and this deals with the automobile engineering okay so the diesel engine okay these are the few factors like injection timing injection pressure and other things which will reduce your overall emissions why these are important will come in the later part of my lecture because by maintaining these under a very com comprehensive and strict uh, inspection and certification or inspection and maintenance program you can not only reduce the emissions you can also reduce the fuel consumption so as the ghg emissions so there are options like technological options okay like including the combustion chamber design or the egr which automobile manufacturers are using to the extent possible to meet the say type of road norms okay and these are also some of the basic requirements of vehicle maintenance to uh, you know like the control to control the emissions now if you see the fuel and lubricant technologies so lubricating oil contribute a lot as far as emissions are concerned alternative fuels uh, like the cng yes they are also reported to have a less polluting and the fuel additives so there are certain fuel additives which have been approved by either the fuel manufacturing uh, uh, like industry okay or by uh, recommended by the automobile manufacturer so i personally feel they are the only fuel additives which should be used okay because there are other uh, fuel additives in the market uh, those cannot be used blindly unless it's certified by the proper agencies now we'll focus more on the exhaust after treatment technologies and i'm going to give you the brief details on this so as far as the compression ignition engines are concerned okay there are two fundamental uh, engines most of you know the petrol engines are spark ignition engines and the diesel engines are compression ignition engine so we also understand the diesel engines are characterized mainly by particulate matter emissions and the nox emissions 
okay why the petrol engines has a problem of carbon monoxide hydrocarbons and the nox and there are lean burn engines which is a very good development okay the lean burn engine is a engine which will work on the higher air to fuel ratio okay so that the fuel consumption is low but because more air is there so nox emission will be higher okay now these are the after exhaust treatment technologies which we will further take up in the details so for diesel vehicle diesel oxidation catalyst is one partial oxidation catalyst is two diesel particulate filters are number three these three technologies are basically to reduce the particulate matter emissions the scr the selective catalytic reduction is for the nox reduction and there is something called nox absorber catalyst which is again for the nox reduction and a lean nox catalyst so these three deals with for controlling the nox and as i mentioned the diesel vehicles are characterized by higher pm and higher nox emissions okay so today as we are focusing on the particulate matter emissions i'll take uh, only those technologies as far as gasoline emissions are concerned uh, we have seen before that gasoline emissions emit more co and hc and nox so for two stroke engines which are almost phased out okay so if you have a higher co and hc they use oxidation catalyst but the most common is three way catalyst which takes care of all the three major component okay there's something called gasoline particulate filters but usually these are not used because uh, by engine modification by fuel quality improvement and by three way catalyst they can easily meet the standards most of the automobiles all right these are the engine design technologies for emission reduction okay as far as is in concern so we have already seen this this will be very important uh, when it comes to okay now as uh, ancaps focuses on particulate matter and diesel engines are the major source when it comes to the automobile emission control uh, emissions so we'll focus on uh, diesel emission control okay so this is how the particulate matter is formed the typical if you ask any uh, roadside fellow how do you recognize the diesel in the petrol vehicle so he will simply say that uh, if it is a black smoke it is a diesel vehicle if it is really not black then it is a gasoline vehicle so this black smoke is courtesy those tiny particles which are black in uh, color okay and they offer this black appearance to uh, to the uh pm emissions or the smoke emissions from diesel exhaust so this is how the particulate matter is formed uh, your exhaust is uh, coming out of a combustion chamber okay and it is traveling from this uh, you know like uh, manifold to your exhaust uh, pipe okay and then it is released in the tail pipe so there are two kinds of phenomena which happens in the tail pipe which is a long pipe okay one is probably good one is bad so during their uh, uh, transport from manifold to the exhaust pipe to the tail pipe they start colliding with each other and they form a larger agglomerates so the size of the particles can grow and they become bigger so bigger is better for us because you can filter them easily and your natural uh, you know like nostril based filter system okay can also trap them so finer the particle is more dangerous we all understand so the particle actually agglomerates when it travels in the exhaust system now what is bad some of the hydrocarbons which are in the gaseous form they start condensing because of the lower of the temperature okay so these droplets you can see these are the adsorbed hydrocarbons and many of them are carcinogenic so basically after cooling down your particle size improves or increases through agglomeration but unfortunately the toxicity also increases okay so that makes diesel uh, particulate filter more harmful so as we have seen the engine and fuel related mod uh, modifications we'll focus on three basic technologies to control the particulate matter emissions from diesel exhaust one is known as a diesel oxidation catalyst this is the simplest one like a catalytic converter you will have a substrate which is generally made of a ceramics okay and these are flow through channel so exhaust is coming from here and going there. and a wall of this is coated with a catalyst so this is a particulate matter and a typical composition of the particulate matter is soluble organic fraction the organic part the core or okay which is like uh, made of a uh, carbon core then the sulfates 
which depends on the, what is the fuel uh, sulfur content and now for the euro 6 fuel it is less than 10 ppm so it is not very significant and some metals which are coming from the engine wear and tear and sometimes from the lubricating oil so euro 6 has set the standard for the lubricating oil as well as for the fuel so we do not have much of these emissions so it comes in the contact of these catalysts and the soluble organic fraction or the volatile fraction okay this gets oxidized so if you have a more soluble organic fraction the mass will be reduced but if you ask me whether the particle will be completely combusted it's unlikely so the diesel oxidation catalyst is a catalytic device which is quite simple in nature but it only offers the moderate control over the soluble organic fraction of it okay so these are the typical reactions uh, which you can easily find the typical efficiency of doc is reported to be 20 to 30 percent which is very very uh, moderate i would say or even you can say low but the advantage is it's a simple device doesn't require maintenance it doesn't create any back pressure so your the next uh, device very commonly used for uh, diesel pm emission control is a diesel particulate filter or dpf this is the most efficient device but uh, it's a bit complex so as we all understand that any particulate matter is there in the exhaust okay or the flue gases the best uh, mechanism is uh, filtration okay so this device is a filter so what is uh, how it is made of so it also has a honeycomb kind of a ceramic structure okay and the only difference is the alternate channel is plugged so if the exhaust is flowing like this it cannot pass through so it has to go through the ceramic wall which works like a ceramic membrane okay so these are alternate plugs or channel and the exhaust passes or flow through this channel you can see the enlarged view so obviously it works like a filter and the particulate matter or the particles get trapped here okay so these are commercially available <clears throat> these are most efficient device and it can filter up to say 95 percent or even more okay so what is the problem we can buy the dpf which is not very costly and fit it everywhere yes there is a challenge after some time the particulate matter will get uh, you know like uh, <clears throat> trapped here and this will start plugging the holes and it will start generating the back pressure and at some point of time the back pressure will be so high the pressure drop will be so high the engine will stop so you need to clean or regenerate the diesel particulate filter unfortunately this uh, pm okay burns at about 550 degrees celsius or even around 600 degrees celsius while the diesel engine being a lean burn engine the exhaust temperature is normally in the range of say 150 to so 400 degrees celsius so regeneration or cleaning of clogged filter is a challenge okay and there are ways to do that which makes this device complex despite the fact this is very efficient okay so in indian context uh, uh, if you see that uh, you know like urban driving cycle where the speed is you know like in the bangalore i think it is uh, average speed is 10 km per hour even in pune and delhi and many other cities so lower the speed the engine moves slowly i mean it, the vehicle moves slowly and the engine temperature or the exhaust temperature is quite low which doesn't help in regeneration so there are two kinds of regeneration one is called active regeneration so what happened it's an electronic device okay electronically controlled active regeneration of fuel injection system after enough pm is uh, filtered and it is getting clogged it senses the back pressure okay at when the back pressure is high it triggers okay this fuel injection system and it uh, just uh, releases certain amount of fuel in the exhaust stream and there is a spark okay so it basically burn the fuel to provide the high temperature okay and this high temperature then reaches your diesel particulate filter to regenerate the suit and the pressure drop is uh, like lowered and obviously the electronic uh, control takes care however for active regeneration you have to accept that you need to provide additional fuel that's a fuel penalty okay it's a bit costly there's also called passive regeneration wherein you know like uh, you can have a kind of catalytic converter here which will oxidize NO into NO2 and this NO2 will reach to this DPF wherein it will react with this particulate matter okay and then uh, this NO2 has a very high reactivity with particulate matter even at lower temperature okay so it will react with particulate matter or soot collected on this and it will form CO2 and NO which can pass through these membrane ceramic membrane and that's how it gets 
regenerated okay now D doc we have seen is a very simple device it's a low cost device it doesn't require maintenance but its efficiency is moderate to low dpf is the best device as far as uh, efficiency of pm filtration is concerned around 95 percent okay but it requires regeneration it requires complex system so obviously uh, the, there are companies and there are scientists who have developed a device which is in between a doc and dpf which is known as a partial flow filter okay so the principle is uh, of filtration is different okay in fact uh, there's a like corrugated uh, uh, <clears throat> this kind of a structure is there and it provides a kind of a torturous path so that the particle is not traveling straight when it is colliding with each other okay and agglomerating it's also losing its momentum and getting settled there okay so with this uh, principle okay you can collect the suit to a level of about 50 percent again the suit lies there but the regeneration we can afford the active regeneration or passive regeneration passive regeneration works fine in this case so in this device there is a doc followed by partial flow filter which can offer you roughly uh, you know like 40 to 50 percent of uh, pm reduction which is good enough in many cases because the engine out emissions are already controlled with the advanced engine technology and all the back pressure is not so high so many um, vehicles or automobiles uses the partial flow filter so we need to understand that even if you are restricting to particulate matter in today's discussion there are legislation to control the nox emission the co emission the hydrocarbon emissions if you're talking about the diesel vehicle, the legislations for NOx and PM are quite severe because they are the major pollutant. So a typical outer exhaust system, which is now getting quite complex when it comes to the Euro 6. So you need a DOC. If you can manage with the DOC, which is not possible for the Euro 6, then it will be followed by DPF. So a combination of DOC and DPF is very common okay, to take care of the PM emissions very effectively. So DOC will control the soluble organic fraction to some extent the moderate efficiency low efficiency for PM but this will predominantly oxidize your NO into NO2. The DPF will collect the particulate matter and then the regeneration will be done by the NO2 formed through this DOC. So it will burn this suit or PM and regenerate the TPF. Now you need to also take care of the NOx emission. So there is a selective catalytic reduction okay it's a catalyst based technology after that this scr uses ammonia okay so there should not be ammonia emissions there should not be unreacted ammonia so you need to put a ammonia slip catalyst so this is very typical but at the same time quite complex we need to understand so there are different combination of these devices which automobile manufacturers practice and uses to control the pm and nox reduction which is uh, the, uh, the amount of reduction is required the, quant uh, the extent of reduction is required these are very typical but it depends on uh, different uh, automobiles and different uh, you know like technologies so they use a combination of doc partial flow filter dpf and to control the nox scr followed by ammonia slip catalyst okay so uh, this is probably one of the best example of uh, scientific and uh, engineering uh, innovations okay and catalytic convert converter is considered as one of the most complex and uh, very challenging and very impressive example of chemical engineering and chemistry and uh, of course other engineering now these devices are good enough to control the emissions now what are the problems okay the the problem is you know like uh, if you move on okay for next 20 years or so your initial standards will be further stringent why because there is hardly any assimilatory capacity left with your uh, ambient air okay or like in moment while at the same time we are increasing the number of vehicles so you need to do that so obviously we need very high volume. now this is something uh, very interesting i borrowed this slide from uh, dr Jim, tim johnson of conning is one of the uh, well-known uh, figure in this uh, domain so it is not kind of a fit it and forget it kind of a system so there are many studies which reveals that if your vehicle is not maintained properly or if your after exhaust treatment devices gets damaged for some reason or because of the poor uh, maintenance or because of the poor use of uh, fuel quality or lubricants or whatever it is okay 
So according to his calculations, if uh, Bharat 6 SCR system is disabled for some reasons, okay, NOx emissions are up 10 to 15 times, okay. So it is roughly 5 to 10 percent of non-compliance, all right. Then if a light duty vehicle, if there is a catalytic converter which is removed, the emissions will be up by 40 times. You can imagine the kind of job these after exhaust treatment technologies does, how important these are. So if you damage, if these devices are non-functional for some reason or it has been renewed, okay, which we found sometimes in the gray market it is available, the, no, uh, the emissions are up by 40 times. So one bad car is equal to 40 compliant cars. So even if you have less than 5% or 10% non-compliant cars, I think most of the most of the benefits of these uh, technologies, which are of course very expensive, okay, you know the kind of investment was made to upgrade the refineries to provide the Euro 6 fuel. These technologies of course cost, but if these devices are not used properly, if the vehicle is not maintained, then there is a chances that we lose no less than 25-30% or even 40% of the benefits. Okay, so <clears throat> what is to be done? So there are like automobile emission control compliance. For new vehicle, it is straightforward because they need to meet the emission norm. For example, today any vehicle manufacturers like Maruti or Tata is producing a vehicle, they need to comply with the Euro 6 or Bharat states 6 norms. So there are test agencies like ARA or ICAT okay, or IIP Dharadur. They need to submit the vehicle there and they will test it rigorously okay, as per the pro uh, protocol and then they will certify it. Then what happens when the vehicle is given to a user? Okay, so in used vehicles, we need to do the engine maintenance, emission compliance, safety to achieve the targeted benefit. As I explained, if the devices or the vehicle is not properly maintained, there is a likelihood that we won't get the desired benefit. Okay, so vehicle res uh, manufacturer's responsibility is very straightforward. Okay, because it's a very organized and formal sector, they do that. Weaker users' responsibility to comply with the idling emission norms, what we typically call POC, to comply with the fuel requirement. That is also straightforward. You go to the fuel station and get it done. To comply with the inspection and maintenance program, if any. These are the implementing agencies. And I have again deliberately made it red because this is actually in, in, in common language, these are the gray areas which are shown in the red. Okay. So in India, there are some existing inspection and maintenance or certification system which is controlled by the RTO. Okay, the PUC checking okay is the only requirement where uh, you must have observed that uh, sometimes they come and ask us. Okay, you have jumped the signal, show your registration certificate, show your PUC. You know, it's only a formality. Especially when you go to the PUC center, sometimes you find uh, they are not doing their job properly. Okay, so this has been a big failure. So sometimes. Uh, the full form of PUC, I write like this. It's not pollution under control, but it's pollution uncontrolled. So there is a need of revamping, but thanks to the government initiative, now there is a renewed PUC system. So reason for failure is an enforcement issue, and second thing is awareness. Because nobody has got time, they feel that once they have done the PUC, they don't want to bother. Okay. So is it really required because PUC is not implemented properly? Okay. Yes, and of course. Okay. So how to improve the PUC? Now the government is trying to establish the inspection certification centers, which are very common in any developed countries. Okay, this is being done very strictly in any developed country, I would say, all the developed countries. And slowly, probably we have no choice but to migrate to this I and C system, okay, wherein you need to maintain the vehicle and the benefits is there are multiple benefits. First is it will improve your fuel efficiency. Second thing, it will also, uh, you know, like these are the typical centers. So it will improve your fuel efficiency. It will reduce your emissions. It will reduce the accidents because in these inspection centers, they practically check everything. Okay. So it's a typical servicing which we do. It's an advanced version of that. Okay. So <clears throat> there's a centralized, decentralized and hybrid kind of a systems of uh, INC inspection and maintenance or inspection and or certification. Okay. And most of the countries, as I mentioned, they have very strict compliance. So we need to introduce this. This is a compliance life of a light duty vehicle. It could be up to uh, one lakh mile or more than that. Okay, which 
is an EPA requirement also. So PUC system needs to be revived and there is a new uh, kind of a renewed PUC system which needs to be implemented very strictly. Okay. So this is one gray area where I feel that NCAP should intervene and uh, INC or INM which will have a far reaching benefits as far as uh, automobile emissions are concerned. Okay. There should be regular audit, equipment calibration, awareness and we need to convince the people that if they are not worried about the emission these kind of a maintenance will save the fuel and the money okay so they will listen because we have done a survey at Nagpur about 20 years back and we in the survey we found yes they are concerned about the uh, you know like uh, fuel saving and the money so we need to create a kind of a business model as well as very strict enforcement of these agencies which are providing the PUC certificate there are very good advancement and I'm sure the NHI is going to implement these things there are remote OBD okay the OBD is already there so fortunately, once the onboard diagnostic comes, uh, you have less control left uh, <coughs> with the tampering of these systems. Okay, but there are remotely control controlled OBT are available, and through this remote control, what you can do once the uh, right now we have a fast tag. So once it is passing through that fast tag or toll plaza, we can install these devices which can actually check the em emissions with the contactless device or remote device. Okay. So these are the important things. Now, uh, just coming to the old vehicle. As we understand now, we are in the Euro 6 regime, but if you see the air quality, we know. Okay. So the impact of Euro 6 is uh, very small for the simple reason that uh, it's only a very small fraction of your total vehicle population, which is Euro 6. So the legacy vehicle, the old vehicle will obviously keep on emitting. Okay. So if you want a fair reduction in the PM emissions, we need to target the old vehicle as well. Because they are old, they are from the different regime, the old regime like Euro 4, Euro 3, even Euro 2 vehicles are there. Okay. So we need to really seriously think about controlling emissions from these in user old vehicle. Okay. So there are many options. Okay. There are many options about this. What could be the good strategy? We need to target the most polluting vehicles which are giving high emissions. So we need to identify the gross polluter. We need to target the most used vehicle. For example, taxis or the buses or the trucks. Targeting vehicle with maximum impacts. For example, a vehicle is running inside the city like city buses. They have to be clean because at least intercity buses are going out. Okay. But the in urban area, in the city, the city buses, the taxis needs to be very, very clean because throughout the day they are moving. Okay. So there are implementation challenges. This is your fleet size, okay? And you can imagine our fleet size is increasing like anything. Like we have close to 25 to 28 crore vehicles, okay? Which are projected to be over 30 crore or 300 million or 350 million by the year 2030, all right? So we need to really look into those things. So I'll share two case studies, which the first one we did way back, uh, more than 10 years back, okay, at Pune. So we, we proposed, uh, uh, along with many other organizations, including CPCB, CIRT, and the ARAI and automobile manufacturer, to do a pilot project on PMPML buses. Okay, these were Euro 0 and Euro 1 buses to see whether, because these are the Euro 1 or Euro 0 buses, which are not fitted with any de devices, not required. Can we fit this after exhaust treatment devices on these buses and reduce the emission? So the first thing we did is uh, with the help of Johnson, Matthew and Cummins, we try to check the exhaust temperature because any catalytic device will require certain amount, certain degree of temperature. We found in the city driving, the temperature is very low. Okay. You can just see that this is 230, 250 degrees Celsius and with using the best of the device, only this window was sufficient to activate the catalyst for PM reduction. Okay. Then what we did, uh, uh, we insulated the exhaust system to check the heat losses and we got a little benefit. Okay, you can see here in this graph the things were improved but not to the extent. Okay, then we retrofitted, yes, uh, <coughs> SWRI was also involved. Okay, they were partner in fact. Okay, so and US EPA and TDA sponsored this project. So these were the devices which were retrofitted on bus and we provided a system here if the back pressure goes very high because it's a public transport. If the back pressure goes very high, so there was a possibility of bypassing it, okay? 
so it was a pretty hard work i would say because of the first of uh, its kind in uh, india and we run the buses and we thought of collecting the data under the real world condition so we simulated the load by putting some sandbags okay and we run through the pune uh, you know like uh, city and we try to collect the online emissions but uh, the things were very different and very difficult because the suit load was very high the pm, PM emissions were very very high and that actually to a great extent started damaging the devices okay so uh, our uh, inference was uh, may not be very positive but it was a very useful uh, experiment to know that probably the euro 0 and euro 1 device uh, buses were not suitable for these advanced devices for multiple reasons but the engine technology was different the baseline emissions were very high and probably the fuel quality was also not up to the mark now after 10 years uh, since last uh, one and a half year we are conducting another project a pilot study to evaluate the potential of after exhaust retrofitment technologies to control emission from in use diesel vehicles this is sponsored by mfcc okay should be thankful to them and all the important sto uh, stakeholders are on board on this so these were the objectives quite uh, clear that uh, we can select some bs3 buses or uh, sorry cars or the vehicles and in in uh, in coordination with the automobile manufacturer arai and the auto exhaust technology manufacturer okay they are the most important uh, part in this and the automobile manufacturer in coordination with them we should try some of the devices to retrofit on this old vehicle okay so we selected some uh, one tata 407 mini truck which is very commonly used in, inside the city and second up uh, bs3 compliant passenger car this uh, maruti suzuki swift the devices i already explained you we tried the doc and combination of doc plus partial flow filter from two different companies okay and with different catalyst configuration okay so uh, the ARI has done all the hard work so as this device manufacturer okay so we have done two or three level of testing okay the engine dynamometer testing uh, chassis dynamometer chest testing and also the field trial so it was quite uh, uh, comprehensive i would say as far as retrofitment is concerned first time we have done such a comprehensive study with the help of ARI and other uh, stakeholder the results uh, as far as tata mini truck is concerned is uh, of course these are the preliminary results okay CO and SC, although uh, those are not very high emissions, but they were reduced almost up to 90 to 93 percent. Okay, almost 90 percent, or in some cases, almost completely. Okay, the particulate matter was ranging from 25 percent to 68 percent. The target was 50 percent in one of the combination of these devices. Uh, the re the control was pretty good, or uh, close to 68 percent. Okay. And the smoke was reduced up to the level of 80 percent okay the chassis dynamometer results also showed the same thing the pm reduction of around 55 to 65 percent so conclusively the pm reduction was uh, quite significant okay similarly for swift desire car uh, the reduction was in the range of 50 percent which was less than the truck okay and there were some observations some technical observations so now after completing these uh, uh, studies you know like uh, we uh, we are now conducting uh, prepared to conduct uh, the durability trials because it's just one step completed if uh, your devices are showing sufficient pm reduction or expected pm reduction now because the vehicle is old you need to also test the device for its durability so that we are expected to complete in next uh, six months and if everything goes fine and the device work fine then there could be uh, some recommendations from the joint committee which is constituted by the ministry of environment uh, forest and climate change okay so this is going on we are also keen to start a project in fact uh, uh, to study the or assess the impact of vehicle maintenance on fuel efficiency and emissions because this is a very important uh, important aspect so uh, i'm coming to almost end of uh, my talk what could be the recommendations okay uh, i think r3 repair retrofit and only then replace one is the focus should be on sustainable mobility not restricting to tailpipe emission from new vehicle and the fuel quality which was so far uh, the focus which is very important of course we need to also consider the road dust the tire emission etc okay and uh, you know like they also contribute a significant part of pm emissions second as i mentioned in my earlier slides the town planning and reducing mobility needs are important 
traffic congestion equally important because that makes a lot of difference in fact okay then in use emission compliance must be strengthened like puc has to be strengthened we need to do the faster uh, completion of inc centers involve possibly private players because nowadays uh, this is a very organized sector so you have got a authorized service station you can make them government authorized as well okay so puc has to be revamped uh, revamped and inc or indem has to be uh, in in force in fact exposure reduction is equally important if you talk about the electric vehicle the one of the best uh, big advantage of them is they reduce the exposure they don't emit at the human exposure zone also they don't uh, i mean the sound pollution is very very less then the repair so we should have adequate service center registered garages which will lead to emission control plus fuel saving in the co2 saving. retrofitment we are trying and if it works fine then it can be recommended for old vehicles to reduce at least 50 to 60 percent of pm emissions then the replacement okay the emission control devices if required can be replaced and we can recover the noble metals we should also consider the carbon and environmental footprint while adopting vehicle replacement policies so nowadays uh, lca data is also available uh, we are also working with the hiroshima university to see what is the impact or what is the overall or uh, life cycle analysis of these vehicle manufacturing and replacing it more emphasis required on emissions from in use and old vehicles and we need to identify cross polluter most of you can see when you are driving out of 50 or 80 vehicles there will be one vehicle which will be emitting hell lot of smoke okay you can easily make out so a study is required to identify it is estimated that one such vehicle is equal to 100 vehicle if not 150 so all get nullified so these gross polluters need to be identified there are many vehicles flying on the road okay so scientific knowledge and technology is mostly in place okay we need to just address these challenges so action required is next approach should be mainly focus on how to get those implemented and i'm sure all of you are uh, responsible for that so we need to systematically move to cleaner transfer options so there are a lot of lca studies there are a lot of uh, arguments and counter arguments but uh, i'm sure slowly we need to move into those uh, technologies by slowly phasing out the, uh, I pro probably i see indian based technology or making it much cleaner so <clears throat> these are some of the uh, more challenges in terms of global warming water and soil pollution resource and sustainability so for which LCA is definitely required. Okay, so drying solution performed less or environmental overall risk assessment point of view. So just to recap, we should not miss the fundamental. We need to somehow reduce the vehicle kilometer per passenger or need for the mobility or need for the transport. We need to reduce fuel per vehicle kilometer. We need to only allow the efficient vehicle. Reduce fuel per passenger kilometer means mass transportation is always good and reduce pollution per unit of fuel after exhaust treatment reduce cost of thing the lot of innovations and low cost catalyst and other things and we need to target the gross polluter vehicle okay so control of emissions only from new vehicles and only from the tailpipe should not be the only aim we need to consider the road dust we need to consider the tire emission we need to consider the emissions especially from the old vehicle maintenance of the emissions okay i and c and i and m of the vehicle to get substantial thank you very much i'll stop here